Hello and welcome back to Advice for Friends. Hey guys, welcome today. Today is a really cool day because usually my guest is like at their house, but my guest is in my house. She's a cool dog herself, a business, business owner and a writer. And also one of my favorite people. Give me a permission so I see y'all in the world. So wise. AKA Alana Lloyd. Hi. Alana. Thank you for having me. Thank you. What's going on? Yes. So like, you're just a dope person all around. Oh, you know, I, I told them just a little bit about you. Mm-hmm. But you you love dance. That was your first love. Yes. So how did how did you get started into dance? Well, let's get into it. Um, for me, dancing kind of came to me through the form of another person. So when I was very young, I would say age three is the earliest I remember my connection with dance, or at least with the arts. Uh, I remember seeing either Super Duper Fly or Sock It To Me, both by Missy Elliott. I remember seeing a music video and I remember thinking like, this is so different. Like Missy just didn't look like any other female artist. Her videos didn't look like any other female artist that was out of time. She didn't sound like anyone else. And her videos were like, a lot of women played off their sex appeal. Mm -hmm. Um, But she just was creative. She had like action figures and Sock It To Me. So I'm like, this is so freaking cool like this is the coolest thing in the world and at that age you know i could try and copy the dance moves that the dancers were doing but at three year motor skills are not that fine so it wasn't really that great but i remember around more so like age five or six i began really copying every music video that missy had out also with Aaliyah. i would just be like i'd be by myself and i already have seen the video and when i really love something i'm able to memorize it so I just put my memory be like, oh, this is what they were doing. Okay, I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna try doing it by myself. And I just eventually, over the years growing up, I've taught myself primarily from music videos and YouTube videos. So, like, so like, so like you were raised down south. Yeah, so I was born in Detroit. You know, most of our family is from Detroit. Um, my mom moved us down south probably when I was like three or four. And being raised in the South was so different, and it contributed mainly to my love for the arts and fashion, and like, excuse me, my arts and my passion for the arts, because being down South, there were, you know, the black population in the entertainment industry was heavier, it was more prevalent. So you could go, like, downtown Atlanta and go past the colleges and stuff and see the black dancers and the marching bands and see the black marching band kids or just on TV and our local commercials. You know, there was more black people heavily involved. So for me, being a person that loved dance and growing up in that type of atmosphere, I'm like, it's, you know, it was really obvious that this could be me. I feel like we're more in tune with our dreams and able to really accomplish them. I feel like we can accomplish them when we see people doing it that look like us. In Atlanta, that was walking outside. So being raised down there for me was a different experience because down south just has a different pace. Southern hospitality is so real. It is, it's real and it's a beautiful thing because down there people really value each other. It feels like they really value time with each other. We like to know each other, we get to know each other and we really care about each other. But up here, like when I moved back to Michigan um, in fifth grade, it kind of hit me. It drove me back, like I was really excited first to come back. So I'm like, oh my God, my dad lives here. Like my family's here, my older sister's here, my cousin. Drew, that was really close to the time was here, but I'm like, when I came back, I'm like, these people are so different. I remember thinking, like, people are kind of, like, rough, in a sense. Like, it's the difference between, let's say you go to a store here, and you look at somebody for a little too long. They kind of look at you like, what the heck are you looking at? But if you're in Georgia, you look at somebody, and you're like, oh my, like, you know, hi, hey, how you doing? Not not here. Not here. And it was just really different. I remember like one of the first things I noticed in school was kids that I say yes ma'am or no ma'am were going home like mama they saying yes ma'am, they ain't saying no ma'am, they ain't saying please take you none of that. I'm like that's crazy. So it was a really moving back just showed me a really big difference in culture. And like, you know, kids can be harsh. Too. Yeah. Like in Georgia, I was kind of too, I've always just kind of been a to myself type of person. 
it's just my personality. I, I really enjoy and value um, a long time. But down there, like, when I would be dancing and stuff at recess, I was able to make friends because, you know, it was, like I said, being in the arts was really popular. So I wasn't afraid to be myself around other kids for the most part in school. But when I moved here and, like, they have to, you know, they have you introduce yourself to the class. And I talk about what I like. I talk about dancing. They're like, like, who does she think she is? And she thinks she's on, like, Disney Channel and just, like, it kind of made me discouraged and it made me just kind of like okay well should i stop dancing is this this like something i should do around people wow so like did, did that make you like did they like, stop all together it honestly did and that's like i i really live life on a kind of like i have really no super deep regrets for the most part but being honest, allowing that to get to me really stunned where I am today because in Georgia, like I said, we were everybody was into it. So it'd be kids whose parents who could afford to send them to stuff like gymnastics and stuff, and they'd be tumbling, doing the flips and stuff. And I'd be watching them like, that's so cool. I'm going to learn how to do it. I would teach myself. I was really fearless there and confident because the environment I had around me was supportive. When I got here and saw the pushback, I'm like, well... I'm not really good around being around other people. I'm not good with telling people how I feel anyways or with just showing this side of me. So I'm just going to stop because mm-hmm. I really like people's ideas and kids' ideas get to me. And like like you said, kids can be harsh. And at that age, if your support system at home isn't like, not that my support system wasn't there at home, but you know my mom didn't know about it, so she couldn't support me in it. But if your support system at home isn't constantly telling you and reaffirming to you and teaching you things of affirmations, then you're not going to affirm yourself and be like, you know what? It doesn't matter what they're saying. I can still do this. But if you're, you have to really like, a lot of people kind of don't get why I stopped, but it comes down to this. When what you're seeing every day is not your, yourself, you know, you see yourself in other people. So if you're not seeing people who look like you still doing this, it starts to take away from that idea of it being possible. And children are impressionable. So for me, I'm like, they're saying I can't do it. I don't see nobody out here doing it. And I'm like, I got live in Michigan. So, I'm just in Michigan, so I'm like, nobody out here is doing it. And, you know, why should I keep trying? So I just stopped. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, everyone has that one person that kind of sparks whatever creativity they have. Like, I mean, that's Tyler Perry. Uh-huh. But who was that for you, like? So, for me, when I stopped dancing, I stopped in fifth grade when I moved back. And in the eighth grade, on a very random day, like this all just came out of nowhere. I was trying to find the song Upgrade You by, like the live version of Upgrade You by Beyonce. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that came up at the top was a dance video. So I just clicked it. Like, cause I, at that time when I stopped dancing, oh, I stopped. Like I wouldn't even watch dancers. I didn't like anything with dancers. And I'm like, they're they're whatever, whatever. Like I didn't care no more. But I clicked on it. Some told me to click on the video and I did. And lo and behold, did I know. The first couple groups didn't even have the choreographer in it. So I'm watching, like, this is, this choreography is different. This choreography was not like what I was used to seeing. I'm like, well, whose choreography is this? So I finally watched a few more of the videos under the same. I saw the name, Will It Be Saddams. I didn't see, you know, I didn't recognize his face at first because he would put some of his dances first. I didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. And I finally saw his face. I'm like, wait a second. This is a black man. This is somebody who is, you know, whose skin looks like mine, being in the industry. And then even being in the industry and being a dark-skinned person, there's a lot of colorism and a lot of backlash to there's dark-skinned people. So I'm like, this is somebody who looks like me. So I started to, you know, I just started to study him. Like, people don't understand sometimes that studying for your craft isn't always picking up a book. Mm-hmm. It's studying videos. So I began studying his videos like, like, like it was homework. I would come home, do my homework, and I get on YouTube and I watch Will, and I learn so much about him, and so much about his story, about how he's from like a small town. He's from Indianapolis, Indiana, and like how he was going to go to school for football because he was a football star in high school, but he really loved dancing. And you know, in Indiana, that wasn't big, so people were telling him, like similar to me, you know, you should pick something more practical. But instead, he picked up his stuff. He moved to Hollywood, and he just fully committed himself to chasing his dreams. Mm. And for me, Will brought me back to dancing. And, like, that's why I just, I'm going to eventually work with him one day. I'm, I'm, I'm a manifester, so I claim that. But that's why, for me, it's so imperative to meet him because 
I need to look in the face of somebody who like re reaffirm me with my own dreams and help me confirm to myself like okay this is possible this is going to happen yeah because this the, the business is, is, is already tough yeah um, so you gotta find you gotta find somebody to look up to like there's a you know some people idolize others and it's really easy to get into idolizing people but more so go for I feel like for me I had to I couldn't idolize somebody who had nothing in their like life before fame in common with me so that's mm-hmm. why it was will that's why it was M- missy because even learning about missy's story about how she came from a little town in virginia virginia you know that inspired me so wow. i began aligning myself with watching people who had similarities to my place where i was at now that's a really big thing with teenagers i feel like sometimes they get upset or get sad because they feel like they don't see their self as somebody else Mm-hmm. And that's a big part of just who we are as people. We're connectors. So I had to see myself and someone else where I was in my current situation to feel strongly enough about going forward. Yeah. And, like, you are a really good advocate for young people and helping young people. Yeah, because I just, I know really. that. I know what it feels like to be young and feel helpless. I know what it feels like to be young and feel like, man, nobody's doing what I want to do. And just being a person, like you said, you mentioned all the things that I do. Like, being a person that's not passionate about one thing but has many passions. And sometimes it's kind of hard, it's kind of frustrating, but I'd rather be so passionate and so full of joy about things that have no passion at all. So I know people who are not passionate about a thing. And it's crazy to watch. It's like you're just getting up every day and doing something for the sole sake of doing your first survival. And it might not be bringing you the joy in life you deserve. And that is crazy to me. I could not do it. So as a teen, it was like, okay, I don't know anybody who's a dancer, who's a choreographer, who also enjoys cooking, who's out there writing books, who also decided to possibly start their own clothing line. Like these are all things that I wanted to do at that time. So I'm like, I don't know anybody like that. So it's not possible. Mm -hmm. And I had to come to a point in my life where I realized just because I have not seen it done before, does not mean it can be done because... When it comes down to our basic everyday inventions, these smartphones, first person who made a smartphone had never seen it done before. That didn't stop them, so why should that stop me? Yeah, the people tell you, tell you that you were crazy. And oh, yeah, I've heard it all. <laughs> You're crazy. This will never work. That's too big of a goal. Uh, try something more. Excuse me. Attainable. Yeah, practical. It was always try something more practical. Do this, do that, but... If you're doing something, your heart is not in it, you know. If it's not speaking to you, then you gotta change it. Look, every uh, every great idea was was crazy. Was the crazy idea? Yeah, it's like everybody sounded kind of crazy when they came up with their first revolutionary idea, and that is a okay. Okay. Come when that man went out there with that kite. Okay. And that <laughs> key is looking at Thomas like, now what's really? <laughs> going on uh, in his head to be out there. I still don't understand why he decided to do that, but I'm glad because I got lights in my house and they turn on and this, and this ring light is working, so I'm, hey, I'm happy for that, but yeah, that one would have never, it would have never made sense. Yeah, and so yeah, it's just all about, you know, seeing, your, seeing yourself finding, finding someone who we can look up to, and like, you don't have to like copy that person, but this too, Look, okay, you're doing that. I can do that too. Yeah, and go for it. Exactly. So, okay, part two. There's there's a, there's a lot more to talk about. So yeah. We, so we need a part two. I think part two is great. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about traveling because you're always going somewhere. Yes. We're gonna talk about more about um your your high school and college things. And this meeting some really, really dope <laughs> yeah. people. So check out part two right now. Passion, romance, sex, sin, pain, and death. 
Love Unexpected. When you think you know your partner, think again.